I think a hacker has to be always curious. We're looking for things that seem off. So we're trying to break the system by giving it input that it doesn't expect. That's what we're looking for. Jackson Henry is a regular 17-year-old juggling high school and exams. He's also a computer hacker. I think the term hacker still carries across the conception that a hacker is a criminal. Um, and we've seen you know, throughout the last few years that that perception is changing. But a hacker can be both ethical and unethical. In cybersecurity, there's a red team and a blue team. Both exist to protect an organisation from attacks. The red team emulates a malicious hacker, while the blue team defends. Jackson is an ethical hacker, also known as a white hat. We're trying to find vulnerabilities before the threat actors find them. So we're going to find them, we're going to patch them, um, hopefully stay always seven steps ahead of the threat actors. Two years ago, he led a small team of white hats that hacked the United Nations and alerted it to an issue via its vulnerability disclosure program, a scheme some organisations use to invite the hacker community to try and find flaws in their systems. We found a security misconfiguration that um, exposed, I think it was around 100,000 um, highly sensitive records that could have been weaponized if it fell into the wrong hands. But the white hat hackers don't always get there first. The data of millions of Optus customers could be sold to criminals. The apparent cyber attack against health insurance giant Medibank Private. Latitude Financial stock remains in a trading hold tonight after it revealed hackers have taken the data of 300,000 customers. The recent surge in cybercrime has impacted millions of Australians and highlighted the urgent need for more cybersecurity workers, with an estimated shortfall of up to 30,000 unfilled positions over the next four years. Here we are in our Sydney Security Operations Centre. The staff are assigned to different clients. They'll watch for behaviours um, that where it means a criminal or a nation state is inside a computer system. Right, so how often are you picking up that sort of activity? It's not uncommon to find behaviours that are dangerous. The type of people that we're looking to recruit clearly have a lot of other job options. Tech itself is growing fast. And then we're not necessarily turning out the job-ready workers that we need through the learning pathways that are there. Online security group CyberCX has started an academy to train 500 people in cybersecurity over the next three years. The environment that we operate in, the threat actors, criminals, nation states, they're emboldened. We've not pushed cost into their operating model, so there's more of them every day. And they're attacking very complex systems that are more complex every day. It's very real and it affects big businesses, governments and uh, the people watching at home. Who's winning the digital arms race? I think we can see who's winning. I mean, there's good defense going on as well, but you have to keep in mind that it's really asymmetric, right? So you literally could have just sort of one person who stumbles across a software vulnerability who's able to cause an incredible amount of damage against an organization that might have a security team of 100 people. Former cybersecurity journalist Jeremy Kirk has spent years researching and speaking with malicious hackers and the IT pros fighting back. I think people feel quite powerless right now because once you give your data up to an organization, it's out of your hands. A lot of organizations that um, you know, have, a lot, have IT systems that are difficult to maintain, prone to vulnerabilities, and prone to human error. What are we looking at here? We're testing a, a Department of Health website at the moment. And if you did find something, say, on the Department of Health website, what would happen? Well, they have a vulnerability disclosure program um, and they allow reporters to submit any findings um, to their security contact email. So we'd report it, get a response and get it patched swiftly. While the Australian government sometimes provides recognition for this kind of reporting, it doesn't offer so-called bug bounties like in the United States, which are cash rewards offered to ethical hackers who find flaws in certain government systems. Bug bounties are one part of a much broader problem. 
but it's not a silver bullet. Uh, we need to teach people how to configure systems correctly in the first place, the business practices that they have. How do we educate their staff? How do we monitor for systems when a hacker invariably gets in and how do we respond to those attacks when they occur? In a statement, the Minister for Cybersecurity, Claire O'Neill, told 7.30 the government is considering whether more incentives are needed to support the ethical hacking community to report vulnerabilities. Whether or not bug bounties are introduced in the public sector, Jackson isn't worried about making money in his chosen field. So I'm still in year 12. Um, I've got my sort of HSC coming up, so we'll complete those. Um, and just because of the skill shortage, I think uni is no longer a requirement in a lot of positions, so I'll probably skip uni and, and try to jump straight for the workforce. Look, those types of skills are rare. Uh, this person's clearly a unicorn. But the vast bulk of people that we're going to recruit are average Australians who just want to help protect um, these things that are so vital to us now.